Yo, how's it going guys? It's Richie Unicorn Caller, and if you read the title, then you are correct. Apparently, people are getting some free Wizard 101 memberships. I'm not even joking. Apparently, people are getting emails, a little promotion email, saying that they uh, have a free membership. I don't know. I didn't check uh, my email. I personally do not have membership. As you can see, I still have the uh, upgrade now button on. So for me, I personally do not have membership, but apparently for others, a lot of people are getting lucky. Here's some evidence. Obviously, I know a lot of people are skeptical, so we're going to jump right into it. At Moplex on Twitter, they usually do this all the time. I'll move my big head face so you can read it. But at Moplex says that King's Isle is now giving away free memberships to players who purchase one in the past and let it expire. However, it's not clear what the requirements are or how recent it can be as one person's expired in May while another person's expired in December. And as we can see here, this is basically what the uh, email would look like. I don't know if we can zoom in right here, but this is what the email would look like if you check your email. Again, this might not be happening for every single person, but I just think that's pretty cool that they're offering a free membership, especially for those who have like an expired membership. So we noticed your membership expired recently, but the spiral still needs saving. Now through September 5th, your account has a free was on one membership on us. So again, there you go. It looks like they're giving people some free memberships. I checked my own email and I didn't see anything. I usually don't really see much of Wizard 101 emails in general. But if you are having difficulties looking at your email, um, first of all, be sure to check your Wizard 101 account itself. And be sure to check in the settings and make sure you look through both emails. There's usually a master email and there's usually like a secondary email. But make sure that you're looking at the correct emails. And then if you're looking in your emails and you can't find anything, be sure to check the spam folder as sometimes you can get mail that might just get piled in with the spam folder. So just be sure to check all the folders and your you know emails and stuff like that. And I think even in like Gmail mail or sometime you can actually do a search bar and search up like Wizzle 101 and stuff like that so now just be aware of that and check your spam folder and all that stuff and if you were one of the fortunate people to get a free membership I highly encourage you guys to start questing because Lemuria is just around the corner or yeah yeah Lemuria comes out in like November so it's it's sort of almost there but again uh, I am excited to see that world but like I said, if you were fortunate to get a uh, membership, enjoy it. I hope you guys have a good one. Also, make sure to go on your account. Make sure there's no like recurring payments with that. But overall, though, I think that's kind of ironic because we were just talking about free stuff in our last video. So the fact how there are people that potentially are getting free memberships, um, I just think that's awesome, right? I mean, I, again, I don't think that really hurts them financially. I don't really think that's going to be a devastation in sales. I just think that's overall nice. All right. Well, we also needed Wizard City to be free, right? I think that should also be something that should be top priority as well. Because Wizard City, like I said, that's not going to financially devastate them, all right? I mean, I understand that Wizard City is boring. I mean, personally for me, even when Wizard City, if it's free, I probably still wouldn't even play Wizard City in general. Because honestly, I'm, I don't know. I mean, Wizard City is kind of boring. I don't really need to go into it anymore. I mean, I have some other areas that I like better than Wizard City. But for the most part, I know a lot of people are passionate about the game. I've been hearing this comment all the time about making Wizard City free or making the first orc free. I think we should start off small. Because Wizard City being free, you know, that's a big step for them. For King's Isle, that is a humongous step, right? That is absolutely humongous to make Wizard City free. It might not sound like a lot, but just making that area just free for everybody, that is something massive. Now, there are some problems with making some areas free. You might have some people complain that they would want their crowns back, which they do have a history of how many crowns you have purchased and your crowns history of what you spent and stuff like that. So I'm sure they could offer refunds for people that did, but I feel like they wouldn't, right? All right, we got some other news, some good news. Um, Atmoplex, again, was looking at the whole MGI um, conference. If you guys don't know, MGI is basically like the parent company that kind of bought out Wizard 101. 
going back to the Microsoft Edge or my web browser, Atmoplex mentioned some interesting things about Pirate 101. Apparently, Pirate 101 is actually doing pretty well, surprisingly, which is actually a shock to me in general. I'm going to show you guys the graph here again, a little evidence here. By the way, make sure to follow Atmoplex. They do all the leaks, not only, but they do all this awesome stuff with the news and the latest statistics. And just overall, just go follow them. Just go follow Atmoplex. But anyway, this is from the MGI thing right here. Pirate 101 shows a strong organic growth. The revenue development, this is it. The acquisition of King's Isle through MGI. The Pirate 101 performance well above plan in the past year with a 27% organic growth. Now the first content update after acquisition started around like I guess April or something like that. King's Isle with large potential to grow the game and its player base in the near future of leveraging MGI's resources. Again, we talked about MGI. A lot of people think, or there's a rumors that MGI or Gamingo usually kills MMOs. So again, it's really early just to like make any assumptions. I mean, I remember when MGI first bought out um, King's Isle. Everybody was like, oh, they're going to make Wizard City free. And obviously they had to make a statement saying, no, Wizard City is not being free yet. Now, I thought this one is also interesting. But Atmoplex says that MGI is planning to invest over 10 M E or or 10 million euros or just 10 M whatever that means um, into sequels and new platform launches of existing games. Now it is worth noting that this extends to the MGI's other games, not just King Isle. So considering Wizard 101 is MGI's biggest performer, it's likely that King's Isle will receive a large chunk of that investment which would be great for the development of the game because overall I think that King's Eye still needs to step it up when it comes to updates especially you know we only get obviously we don't need like three updates for worlds um, if you guys don't know the main thing that happens is that we usually just get like one world update per year right it's like a yearly release of a new world right and so, um, obviously, you might have some people that might get bored in the spring and the summer updates. And you might see a large proportion amount of people, or just a large impulse of people coming back in November to play the new world quest, grind, and basically leave again. And wait until the next November. So, I just thought that was pretty interesting. There was also a, uh, another mention about Nintendo Switch. This is interesting. But estimated 35M Euros um, revenues for 2021. The subscription revenues are now 33% of King's Isle total revenue. Now this is up from 31% shown previously. And then MGI reiterated that their intent to port the games to mobiles and consoles starting Switch is likely first. It would be pretty cool to see um, Nintendo Direct. If you guys don't know, Nintendo Direct usually happens, but it would be interesting to see Wizard 101 at the Nintendo Direct or something like that. Just see it as a game that's available for the Nintendo Switch. And we talked about this with the consoles of Wizard 101 and stuff like that. The main thing that they're going to have to do is cross save or basically the ability to use an already existing account and, of course, cross play. And and that is going to be something that is going to be really heavy on resources because it's not always easy to do crossplay, especially when it comes to something like Wizard 101, where the technology is kind of low. And, you know, Wiz technology, it, it, it's kind of low. I mean, remember that this game doesn't even have a two factor authentication, so it's more likely that we're going to have to wait either way. And I remember that they said that the window is usually like 2022 is when we could see some mobile game ports or console ports. But like I said, I feel like actions speak louder than words. I mean, these are guys in business suits and stuff like that. They only care about money. Let's just wait and see what happens. I really do hope that was one that one does come from consoles or goes to consoles. But if there's no crossplay feature, which there obviously should be, or if you can't use an already existing account, then it's probably just going to be something I'm just going to forget about. I think that kind of happened with Steam in the beginning. With Steam, you couldn't really use an already existing account. You had to create an account through Steam. But that's going to wrap it up for the news today. This is just a little pre-recording. My name is Richard Unicorn Caller, and let me know if you're excited for the future of Wizard 101, and I'll see you guys later, and peace out.